Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to discuss another important question for technical interview and today's question is finding the minimum number of rooms required for scheduling a list of meetings in an office which is more commonly known as the meeting room problem. So before going into the solution of this problem, let's first understand the problem. So the meeting room problem is actually a type of problem by which you can solve many problems that comes during the interview. And another popular interview question that comes based on this concept is strain and platform problem. And both of them have the same type of solution to the problem. So let's first understand the problem. So given an array of numbers which denotes the start time and the end time of each meeting, we have to find out the minimum number of meeting rooms that is needed to schedule all the meetings in our office. So over here, if you see, the first item over here is the timestamp for our first meeting. So over here, the start time of our first meeting is 9 a.m. whereas the end time of this meeting is 10.50. Similarly, for our second meeting over here, the start time is 10.45 and the end time is 12.15. Similarly, we can have multiple number of details over here and we need to find out minimum number of meeting room required to schedule all the meetings in our office. So over here, let's first understand the solution that what is the actual solution that we need over here. So over here, let's consider that this is a timestamp for a particular given day and our office is starting from 9 o'clock in the morning. And at the very starting point, we see that there is a meeting starting from 9 a.m. and which is completing at 10.50. So, there will be a meeting room that is required till 10.50. So, this is our first meeting. So, if you see, the second meeting is starting from 10.45 till 12.15. Since the starting time of this second meeting is less than that of the ending time of this meeting, so obviously we cannot schedule the second meeting in our previous room. That is why we need a separate meeting room where the meeting will start from 10.45 till 12.15. Now comes the third meeting that starts from 11 o'clock to 12.30. So over here you can see that the third meeting is starting from 11 o'clock. So obviously the first meeting already got over at that time because the ending time of the first meeting is 10.50. So over here at 11 o'clock we can start our third meeting that is running from 11 o'clock till 12.30. And we can easily schedule this meeting on our first meeting room. So over here also we will be using the previous meeting room that is the meeting room number 1. So over here, you can see that until this point, we need two meeting rooms. One is the meeting room number one and number two meeting room number two. Now comes the third meeting that is starting from 12 o'clock in the morning till 1.30. So if I want to start another meeting from 12 o'clock, you can see both the meeting room, that is the meeting room number one and two is occupied with the previous instance of the meeting. So we do not have any meeting room available and thus we need an another meeting room to allocate this meeting successfully. So we will start another meeting starting from 12 o'clock till 1.30 and this will take another meeting room, let's call it M3. So over here you can see that the total number of meeting room that is required to schedule all this meeting in our office is 3. So this is the required output that we need to generate from this given problem. So I hope you guys have got the concept of this problem that what is the ultimate goal of this problem means what is the actual problem statement or the request statement for this problem. Similarly based on this line we can also have a train and platform problem where the interviewer will give the arrival time and the departure time of each and every train. So, for example, this is train 1, this is train 2, and so on. So, this is the arrival time of the train, and this is the departure time of the train. So, based on this concept only, we have to find out the minimum number of platforms that we need so that we can accommodate all the trains successfully in our platform. So, both the problems lies on the same concept, and the way of solving these two problems is more or less similar. 
So if you solve one of the problem, I hope you can also solve the another problem easily. So let's start solving the meeting room problem. So for this, we will be directly jumping to our visual display board so that it will be easy for you to understand the solution of this problem. And over here on the first go, we will be giving the optimized solution. Because the brute force approach of solving this problem is quite simple and tedious also. Because using the brute force approach, you have to look through over each and every meeting timestamp and you have to plot the correct meeting room at correct place. And the complexity of solving that problem will be order of n square, which you know is not an optimized solution for solving this type of problem. So we will be directly jumping into our optimal solution of solving this problem and we will see how we can solve this question in n log n time. So let's jump into the solution of the meeting room problem. But before that, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So let's move to the visual display board. So as we were discussing, our problem statement tells that given a list of meeting details with corresponding timestamp of start and the end time of each and individual meeting, we have to calculate the minimum number of meeting room needed to schedule all the meetings in the office. So over here you can see, to solve this problem, we are taking four meeting timestamp as our data. So over here you can see that the first meeting is starting from 9 o'clock in the morning and it completes at 10.50. Whereas the second meeting starts from 11 o'clock and ends at 12.30. Similarly, we have two other meetings over here. So the way or the approach by which we will be solving this problem is very simple and very easy. Let's first understand the process. So the first thing that we will be doing is to solve this problem, we will be sorting all the meetings based on the start timestamp. So over here, you can see that the first meeting starts from 9 o'clock. And the second meeting starts from 11 o'clock and third meeting is starting from 10.45. So over here after sorting, this will be the corresponding sorting time of each and every meeting. So over here you can see based on the timestamp, this is the schedule by which we should start the meeting. Now to solve this problem in n login time, that is in the most efficient time complexity, we will be using an extra data structure. As of now, don't go into the detail of what type of data structure we are using over here because I will be telling in detail that what is the exact data structure we will be using in the later part of the video and why we are using that data structure. So as of now, for simplicity, let's consider that this is a normal array which can hold few data over here. So the first step of solving this problem is to sort all the meetings based on the start timestamp. And the second step is we need to iterate through each and every meeting over here to find out the minimum number of rooms that is required to allocate all the meeting rooms in our office. So we will start with the first iteration that is the meeting one and we will check the start and the finish time of the meeting. So over here the start timestamp is 9 o'clock and the finish timestamp is 10.50. So over here, the first thing that we will check that whether this data structure, which you can assume as our calendar, whether this calendar is empty or not. So over here at this timestamp, that is at 9 o'clock, since no meeting is allocated in our calendar schedule, so over here we will simply allocate one room for this meeting and we will put the finish timestamp, that is the end timestamp, over here which means that this meeting is starting from 9 o'clock and one meeting room has been allocated for this corresponding meeting and the finish timestamp of this meeting is 10.15. Now we will go to the second item of our iteration and that is meeting 3. So over here also we will again see the start and the end timestamp of this meeting. So over here also we will again check our calendar that is this data structure that whether this data structure is empty or not. So over here you can see this data structure is not empty. 
means there is some meeting that is already running in one of the meeting room. So what we will do, we will take the start timestamp of this meeting for which we need to allocate a meeting room. So the start timestamp of this second meeting is 10.45, which means that the current time is 10.45. Now we will check the calendar that whether the previous meeting that got started at 9 o'clock whether that meeting got finished or not. So over here you can see that the finished timestamp of the previous meeting was 10.50 and the start timestamp of this meeting is 10.45 which means that the previous meeting is still running. That means we need to allocate another room for this meeting. Thus we will increase the number of meeting rooms over here from 1 to 2 and we will also add the corresponding end timestamp of this meeting that is meeting 3 in our calendar and we will move forward with our iteration and this time we will get meeting 2. So over here the start timestamp is 11 o'clock. Similarly with the same approach we will check whether our data structure is empty or not. So over here this is not empty and thus we will take the start timestamp of this current meeting and we will check that at this corresponding instance means at 11 o'clock whether there exists any previous meeting which got completed. So over here you can see that the first meeting over here got completed at 10.50 which means that we can utilize this corresponding meeting room for scheduling our third meeting over here. So now if you look into this data structure, we have two end timestamps over here. One is 12.15 and one is 10.50. And we need the minimum of these two because based on that timestamp, we can understand that whether the previous instance of the meeting got completed or not. So the data structure we can use over here, which can find out the minimum timestamp in the most efficient way is the priority queue. So instead of using a priority queue, you can easily use an array over here and each time you are putting a value over here, you can simply sort that array based on the minimum timestamp. That can be one of the approaches. But if you know that the priority queue does the same thing for you and you do not have to implicitly sort this queue based on the minimum timestamp. And that is why we will be using a priority queue over here. So what priority queue actually does over here is based on the value that are present on the priority queue, it will fetch the minimum timestamp from here. So over here, based on these two entry, 1050 is the minimum timestamp and over here you can see that 1050 is less than 11 o'clock which means the previous meeting got already completed over here. So we can simply remove this corresponding meeting and we will also release one of the meeting room from here. So right now only one meeting is running on our office and that is the meeting number 3 which has start from 1045 and which will complete at 12.50. Thus, to start this third meeting, we will simply allocate one more room and we will add the corresponding end timestamp over here. Similarly, in this way, we will keep on iterating with the next meeting timestamp and we will check that whether there is any meeting that got completed before 12 o'clock or not. So over here also, none of the meeting got completed before 12 o'clock and thus we need to allocate one more room for our meeting and thus we will increase the number of rooms and we will allocate the corresponding finish timestamp over here. Thus at the end of the entire iteration of all the meeting room, you can see that the total minimum number of rooms required is 3. So I hope you guys have clearly understand the concept by which we will be solving this problem. So if you just analyze the complexity of the problem. So you can see the time complexity of this problem is n log n and the space complexity of this is order of n. So I hope you guys have completely understand the approach by which we are solving the meeting room problem. So if you like this approach, don't forget to like and share this video. And if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So let's start with the implementation of this concept using our Java code and hopefully it will be much more clear to you so that you can easily crack this question during your interview. So I hope you guys are clear with the concept. 
So let's start with the implementation of the algorithm. So let's name the function as finding minimum rooms. And over here, we will be passing this arrays of number, which is actually our meeting timestamp. So the first thing we will be doing is we will be sorting this array. So the easiest way by which we are sorting this given array is by using the comparator method. So over here you can see we are passing this meeting array and over here using the comparator method we are sorting it by the first entry of this timestamp that is the starting index. Thus at the end of this array.sort our given array will be sorted in the ascending order of their start time. So this was the first step of our solution. Now the second step of our solution is we need to assign external data structure which will help us in solving the problem and for which we will be using the priority queue. And the reason why we are using a priority queue over here I have explained you already in our visual display board. So let's define a priority queue over here. Now the next and the final stage of our solution as we have discussed is we need to iterate over each and every meeting details that is given as our input and based on the start and stop timing we have to allocate the corresponding meeting rooms. So let's iterate over this meeting array. So within this loop, the first thing that we will be checking that whether the calendar, that means whether our priority queue is empty or not. And if it is empty, we will be directly allocate one meeting room for this meeting and we will keep on iterating. So over here, if our calendar is empty, means no meeting has been scheduled over here till now we are directly allocating a meeting room for this corresponding meeting as well as we are adding the end timestamp over here. So here we at the start of the program we need to initialize a variable called as meeting room. Now the next step of our iteration is if the meeting room is not empty we have to pop out the finished timestamp of the last meeting and we have to check that whether the end time of that previous meeting is less than that of the start time of this current meeting. And if the end time of the previous meeting is less than that of the start time of current meeting, we will pop out the previous meeting and we will push the new meeting over here. And at the end, we will close our iteration. And over here, we will be returning the total number of meeting room that we have allocated till now. So I hope you guys have clearly understood the solution of this problem. So the solution of this problem is pretty simple and straightforward. And hopefully using the same solution, you can also solve the station and the platform problem. So if you just analyze the complexity of the program, you can see over here, since we are using a for loop, to iterate over the meeting array. So over here the complexity of the program is order of n. But since we are using a priority queue as an external data structure and the time complexity of the retrieval time of a priority queue is order of n log n and that is why the entire complexity of the program becomes order of n log n. So I hope you guys have thoroughly understand the problem and if you have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you as well as I will be sharing the entire code in the description below. Feel free to go through that code and understand the solution completely. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and share with your friends. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for the next interview. So let's move to the next interview question. See you on the next video. Thank you.